A very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to week 15 of the semester, the very last week, and also the very last class for CIN 708. So I hope that all of you are doing well. At the same time, I hope that all of you have submitted your final assessment, the research project, which carries 15% towards your coursework. Now, uh, there are a few of you who are facing issues in terms of uploading your videos on Google Drive. Uh, uh, as per those who were facing issues and they have emailed me or messaged me on Moodle, we have sought things out. Now, if you're one of them and you're still facing issues, please do uh, give me a heads up, uh, drop me a message on Moodle, or you can send me an email and we'll get things sorted straight away. All right. Now, for this week, what we'll do is we'll continue with the revision questions. We have two lectures uh, whereby we are still supposed to uh, disseminate the revision questions. We'll try to get that done. Moreover, we'll also go over our final exam layout. The final exam layout has also been posted on Moodle. Okay, I have posted it up in the morning, so please do have a look at it. Now, for this class, as uh, there are some of you who would be attending it, uh, I've also dropped a message on Moodle. The class for today has been canceled. The reason being is you must have received a message from the university that uh, today the university is already, uh, is only opened up till 12 p.m. So that means you're closing all our operations at 12 p.m. due to uh, Diwali. Uh, and it's giving time out to students and staffs alike to actually go and prepare themselves out for the event. Now, in that case, our class was affected. So what I've decided is that I have canceled the class and instead of that, I have, I'm recording this particular video. So by the time you would actually go and have a look at the, or try to join in Moodle or have a look at week 15 section of the Moodle shell, you will already have this video uploaded. So uh, thank you for those of you taking your time out to actually view this. Uh, I appreciate your efforts and definitely your efforts are going to be rewarded in one way or the other. All right, so without further delay, let's have a look at week 15 section of the Moodle shell. So in week 15, uh, our lecture class, we were supposed to actually look at the revision questions and cover up lecture eight to lecture 10 of the revision questions and the final exam layout and also some revision tips and hints. So these are the things that I will be taking care of in this particular video. Now, there is no tutorial class for Friday. This is the final class, the tutorial class. I'm giving it out to the students to actually go and start preparing themselves for the final examination. By the way, the final examination will be hosted from the 15th. That means week after next from the 15th all the way till the 19th or to 21st of November. It will be a final assessment. You'll have sections A, B, C, and D. So section A is 15 multiple choices worth 15 marks. I also have the layout here so I can just open it up, okay? So section A is 15 multiple choice questions worth 15 marks. Section B is a combination of short and long answer questions that carries 30 marks. Section C is case study. Now that is a total of 25 marks. Now section A, B and C are going to be timed assessments. When we say timed, for example, for section A is 15, multi 15 multiple choice questions. So as per our exam prepara preparation uh, time, okay? Or uh, when you're preparing for the exams, we have a time allocator. So multiple choice questions are generally given two minutes per question, okay? So 30 minutes will be allocated for section A. So you'll be given time from the 15th till 19th. So any time between those five days, you may go and attempt your section A, section B, and section C separately. They will be in separate uh, quiz layouts, okay? So you can attempt them separately, but the moment when you start off with a particular question, your timer kicks off straight away. So you uh, are supposed to get all the questions done within that timed frame. Okay, now section B is combination of short and long answer questions, 30 marks. Most likely you'll have close to about 
more than one hour for section B, again timed. Section C is case studies, most likely 30 to 45 minutes per a case study question. And section C is going to be essay questions, which is worth 30 marks. Now in your essay questions, there will be two essay questions, 15 marks each. You would be asked to get your assessment done in a non-timed allocator. When we say non-timed allocator, it's just like when you're doing your assignment. Okay, so you can have a look at the question and then you can do a bit of research on it and get something submitted before the deadline. Now, again, the deadline is going to be from the 15th all the way down to 19th. Let me see if I can extend it a bit further. I know some of you are working students, so I'll try to get it done by the 21st. I already have permission, by the way, from the department to get it done till the 21st, so we'll we'll work according to it, okay? So, uh, so you'll... The essay questions were 30 marks, two essays, you'll get it submitted anytime within 15 to 21st of November, and it's non-timed. That means uh, you can do the question and then submit it later. All right, so that is on the final exam layout. Now, some general tips for your final exams. I would ask you to go and study all the tutorial questions. Moreover, also go and study your mid-semester exam, okay? Tutorial questions, mid-semester exam. Please also go around looking at all the case studies that you have in your tutorials, okay? It's very important that you pay keen attention to all the uh, case studies as well. Why? Because with the case study, you have concepts that needs to be tackled, okay? For example, if we are discussing on the topic of artificial intelligence, so your case study would be somewhere revolving around artificial intelligence, okay? So you have to ensure that you cover up the case studies very, very well. Moreover, also please go and do a quick revision on your lecture-based quizzes as well. Uh, there's a high tendency that some of the questions may be similar, in the final exam multiple choice questions. And then have a look at all your assessments, your assessment number one, critique writing and your research project. Now remember your critique writing and research project, they were also revolving around a specific area of topic within our learning outcomes for CIN 708. So you need to ensure that you go through the assessments as well. And finally, go over all the revision portions that are given to you pre and post mid semester break. Now before mid semester break for your mid semester exam, I had given you a set of revision questions. And then after the break, which is yes, last week and this week, I am again giving you some revision questions. So please ensure that you answer those questions very, very well and then revise them accordingly. Just by in case, if you go over all the revision questions that I've given you, uh, before the mid-semester exam and last week and this week, there's a definite chance you will score more than 60 to 70 out of 100. Okay, why? Because I am covering almost everything important for CIN 708 in these revision questions. Okay, so once again, to summarize the tips, go over your mid-semester exam, your tutorial questions, case studies, lecture-based quizzes, your two assessments, okay? Uh, and revision questions before the mid-semester exam and revision questions from last week and this week. Okay, so that is your tip for the final exam. Now, next up, what we'll do is we'll go over the revision questions. So in last week's class, we had a look at some of the revision questions and we're still left with close to about two of those. So without further delay, in fact, we're left with two, yes, uh, from lecture nine and lecture 10. So not so much, it's, it will be quite short because lecture 10 is very short, very simple, summarizing on forecasting future. Whereas in week uh, nine, you have a bit of longer span of, where, where is in week nine, you have a bit of longer span of uh, lecture slides, okay? so. Lecture nine, basically the coverage was on system development and project management, corporate responsibility. 
So in here, we're looking at the system development life cycle. We're looking at the system development methodology. Uh, moreover, we're looking at some of the elements that may be used in project management that can successfully deliver projects. So we'll be looking at all this. So please start writing down the questions. Question number one, lecture nine, question number one, describe the seven phases of system development life cycle. Describe the seven phases of the systems development life cycle. Describe the seven phases of the systems development life cycle. Now, do note it doesn't say list, it says describe. Describe, explain, elaborate. Okay, this means that you actually have to list down the concepts, the phases in this case, and then explain more about it. Okay, now just in case if it says describe and you're just listing it down, you'll be marked wrong or you'll be given very little portion of the marks, okay? Question number two, summarize the different software development methodologies. Summarize the different software development methodologies. Question number two, summarize the different software development methodologies. Question number three, explain why a company would implement, explain why a company would implement a service-oriented architecture. Explain why a company would implement a service-oriented architecture. Question number four. List down some consequences of, now the question says lists. This is where you're listing down. List down some consequences of Software successes and failures. List down some consequences of software successes and failures. Question number five. Define system development life cycle. Define system development life cycle. Question number six. List and explain. List and explain. Question number six. List 
and explain the four types of list and explain the four types of implementations list and explain the four types of implementations in software development list and explain the four types of implementations in software development question number seven Explain the term prototype. Explain the term prototype. Question number seven, explain the term prototype. Question number eight. Explain project management. Question number eight, explain project management. and the primary reasons why projects fail. Explain project management and the primary reasons why projects fail. Explain project management and the primary reasons why projects fail. Question number nine, define outsourcing. Question number nine, define outsourcing. Question number 10. Identify the three different types of outsourcing. Question number 10, identify the three different types of outsourcing. Full stop. Identify the three different types of outsourcing. Full stop. What are their benefits and challenges? Question mark. What are their benefits and challenges? Question number eleven. Differentiate between Question number 11, differentiate between scope creep and feature creep. Differentiate between scope creep and feature creep. Creep, C R E E P. Question number twelve. List some examples of question number twelve. List some examples of.
tangible and intangible benefits. List some examples of tangible and intangible benefits. Question number 13. Differentiate between, question number 13, differentiate between economic, comma, economic, comma, operational, operational and schedule feasibilities. Differentiate between economic, operational and schedule feasibilities. Spelling of feasibilities, F-E-A-S-I-B-I-L-I-T-I-E-S, -I -I feasibilities. Question number 14. Explain the triple constraints of project management. Explain the triple constraints of project management. Explain the triple constraints of the project management and the relationship between these constraints and the relationship between these constraints. Question number 15. Define the following terms, colon. Define the following terms, colon. First term, project. First term is project. Next term is project manager. Project manager. Next is project milestone. Milestone, M-I-L-E-S-T-O-N-E, -E, project milestone. Next is project management. Project management. And the last term from there is project deliverable. Project deliverable. D-E-L-I-V-E-R-A-B-L-E. -E -E, project deliverable. Question number 16. Who is a project stakeholder? Question number 16. Who is a project stakeholder? and explain their importance. Who is a project stakeholder and 
explain their importance. Question number 17. List down two primary diagrams. List down two primary diagrams. Used in project planning. List down two primary diagrams used in project planning. Question number 18, list factors list factors that drives growth in list factors that drives growth in outsourcing list factors that drives growth in outsourcing so that concludes the questions for lecture nine you have a total of 18 questions So moving on with lecture 10. Now lecture 10 wasn't a lot of slides, but let's see where we can actually uh, get few questions that might have a possibility of being tested out in the exam. Question number one, identify the global trends, identify the global trends, identify the global trends that will have the greatest impact that will have the greatest impact on future businesses. Question number one, identify the global trends that will have the greatest impact on future businesses. Question number two, explain why businesses use trends Explain why businesses use trends to assess the future. Explain why businesses use trends to assess the future. Question number three, identify technologies, identify technologies that may have the greatest impact that may have the greatest impact
on future business decision making. Greatest impact on future business decision making. Question number four. Explain the relationship between, explain the relationship between trend analysis, comma, explain the relationship between trend analysis, comma, Trend monitoring, trend analysis, comma, trend monitoring, and trend projection. Explain the relationship between trend analysis, trend monitoring, and trend projection. Question number five. List and explain some reasons. List and explain some reasons. To study trends. List and explain some reasons to study trends. Question number six, what are some potential business impacts? What are some potential business impacts in creating a knowledge dependent, in creating a knowledge dependent, D E P E N D E N T dependent global society. What are some potential business impacts in creating a knowledge dependent global society? Question number seven. What are some potential business impact? What are some potential business impact of economy? Potential business impact of economy becoming more integrated of economy becoming more integrated. Question number eight. Give reasons why the following statement Give reasons why the following statement may be true. Give reason why the following, give reasons rather, reasons why the following statement may be true. 
So in opening close inverted commas or in quotes, write down the business world is dominated by technology. The business world is dominated by technology. The business world is dominated by technology. So that also finishes up the questions for lecture 10, uh, for lecture 10. Okay, now to sum things up, what we had done in today's class, first of all, we had gone over the final exam layout just to have a quick summary of it. So your final exam layout, section A, multiple choice questions were 15 marks. Section B, short answer, and long answer questions were 30 marks. Section C, case study questions were 25 marks, two case studies, and two essay questions were 30 marks. Your final exam will be hosted from the 15th till the 21st of November, 2021. Now your final exam is going to be online based whereby section A, B, and C would be timed within a time framed uh, base quiz in that particular week and your section D is going to be a non-timed base uh, assessment. Now some hints that I had given earlier, please refer to your mid-semester exams, your tutorial questions, case study questions, lecture based quizzes, assessments and the revision questions that had been given pre-mid-semester break and post-mid-semester breaks. That means last week and this week. And finally, we had gone over the revision questions from lecture nine and lecture 10. Lecture nine, I had given a total of 18 questions and lecture 10, a total of eight questions. Okay, so this is where we finish off the class for today. And the same time we finish off for CIN 708 for the semester. Now, uh, overall, this particular unit is completely theory-based with the amalgamation of management information system and with uh, technology in terms of information systems, information technology, and computer sciences. So it is an interesting unit, interesting course overall. And if you may be thinking, okay, whether these things will be applicable in the real world or not, Believe me, it will be, okay? Especially in terms of you analyzing, assessing, evaluating things for future decision-making. So this is what management information systems are all about, okay? Moreover, uh, I'd also like to thank you for the wonderful semester, okay? And also for keeping up with all the syllabus and giving in your available time. And finally, I would like to wish you all the very best for your final examination. Please, you have two more weeks Next week is study break. After that, you have the final week. So try to use your time as properly as possible. Make good timetable for yourself. Stick to the timetable for a week or so. And after that, you're done with the entire semester. All right, everyone. I wish you all the very best. Take care. Stay safe. A very happy Diwali. And yeah, keep up with the good work. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.